Hey, I'm Janelle with the Red Cross. I'm going to be living on a ship for a while and I want to show you what it's like. We're still in a port, as you can see, in Naples, Italy, but soon we'll be setting off on our mission to save lives in the Mediterranean Sea. More than 1,100 people have died this year alone trying to cross the central Mediterranean route, the majority from North Africa to Europe. My team at the Red Cross Red Crescent and SOS Mediterranean will be doing search and rescue operations and caring for survivors once they're on board. I want to take you alongside me on this humanitarian mission to show you what it's like to work alongside a crew from all over the globe and show you everything from what we eat to where we sleep and actual rescue operations. I have my fingers crossed that I will avoid seasickness. But most importantly, my hope for this mission is that survivors on board this ship will feel safe and cared for while they're here. Okay, can you see this? This is a rescue going on at night in the Mediterranean Sea. The blue boat is full of people in distress and the boats with lights are our speedboats. Those are what people are being rescued with. Um, so right now we're on deck. Uh, we're getting it ready to receive people who are coming here who've been rescued. There's a medical clinic behind me um, for people to be triaged if they have issues. Um, otherwise, we will basically get them seated, register them, give them blankets, um, which I'll show you, uh, and some rescue kits, which are, there's some blankets. These are our rescue kits. They have food, no, they have water, um, and they have a change of clothes and things like that. Uh, this is Francesco from our Red Cross team and he's basically making like little bracelets that we can put on people if they have fuel smell on them which means they need to have a shower right away because um, it's dangerous and they have fuel on them um, so it's a really active 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 deck right now um, and we're just waiting for this rescue to happen um, in front of our eyes in the dark Right now, we have more than 300 people on board who were rescued from flimsy boats and really unseaworthy rafts and brought on board to our rescue ship. I'm not able to introduce you to the survivors here because we're trying to be respectful of their privacy. People have been through so much trauma over the past years and we're helping them hold on to that sense of relief, to let them relax and to process what they've been through. So that's what a lot of people are doing on deck right now. We have something like 40 kids on board and nine infants, people from all over the world, Bangladesh, Mali, Syria, Nigeria, Cameroon. It's awe-inspiring to speak with people here, and while I can't show you their faces, I am able to tell you a little bit more about what life has been like on board. So whenever we're outside as a crew, we wear these PPE, and we also need to wear eye protection and really good masks. Of course, it's still a COVID pandemic and we're trying to be really, really careful. People can't see our faces, so we all wear our names and a picture of us around our neck so people can see that they're dealing with a real human being who is smiling under the mask. Um, so this actually has been super, super helpful. It's getting like torn apart because so many people are looking at it, but it's a wonderful thing to be able to have. When people are rescued and come onto our ship, they have so many different reactions. So some people are just crying. Some people collapse because they're either so relieved or because they have injuries. And others are just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And they're like fist bumping and high-fiving us. I got a lot of fist bumps the other day. So people are just really relieved to be on board and be on their way to a new, different, and safer life. When survivors come on board, our medical team is able to triage them right away. It means they're able to provide that urgent care that's needed. So literally, if somebody collapses or needs CPR, our crew or our doctor, nurse, midwife are able to provide that. And we're able to provide any kind of first aid that's needed or even care for injuries that people have had for a long time. And then throughout their time here, people have access to nurses and doctors who are dealing with things like dehydration, treating torture wounds, and even helping people with seasickness. So on board every morning, we provide tea and breakfast, and people love gathering around for a hot drink. 
And it's something people from all over the world can bond over. Everyone wants a hot cup of tea or coffee in the morning. We also have games on board. We have coloring books for kids. We have a drum, so survivors have been playing music from all over the world, from Nigeria, Cameroon, Syria. So that's been amazing to hear people just able to have some joy right now after all the pain that they've felt. But there's also a lot of anxiety. People don't necessarily have certainty about their next step. So, you know, people are just waiting to see what will happen when they reach Italy. When they do reach the coast, survivors can open a case to trace missing family members or let their loved ones back home know that they're safe. Then survivors can apply for asylum if they're fleeing persecution and the Italian government will process their cases. Kids will be enrolled in school while awaiting decisions about asylum and adults will try their best to build a new life. There are still months or years of uncertainty for people, but one thing is for sure, They're just glad to be safely on land and on their way to something new. Well, after five weeks aboard this rescue ship, I'm finally disembarking. I'm so proud of our team. We've been able to help save more than 300 lives in the past weeks. I've met some really incredible people, parents who are fleeing conflict zones with their infants in tow, kids and teenagers who've made the arduous journey alone, and people who just didn't know whether they'd make it out of their difficult situations and are now on their way to a new future with hope and a way of moving forward. I've also made some really great friends from our crew of people from all over the world. I've gotten my sea legs and I even participated in a, in a tradition to shave a little bit of my head before we set sail. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me.